Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jen from the blog SeekingDelectari.com. I thought it'd be fun today to share a tour of our new school room. Well, kind of new. We finished it a few months ago. But before I start, I wanted to make very clear a couple of things. One, you do not need a homeschool room to homeschool. We have homeschooled over the past 10 years in our living room, our dining room, a bedroom turned into an office, a fifth wheel camper, our kitchen, and even our laundry room at one point. So yeah, you don't need a school room. But for my kids, they really do better in a dedicated space. It helps them focus and it kind of just helps them transition to, okay, now we're in school and now we're not in school, just doing life. So for us, it's been a good thing to have a separate room. Um, my husband actually a few years ago said, you know what, we homeschool, it's part of our life. Let's just take the front room of our house and it's the most light filled room and make it the school room and call it good. And so that's what we did. And it has been amazing for us. Before we made the changes to this room, it, I kind of liked how it was set up. Um, we had tables, which were really great for like morning time and the kids had space to kind of spread out and do what they needed to do. But it also invited a lot of clutter because of all those flat spaces. The paint color didn't work out the way we hoped it would and so it ended up feeling really cold. And when we had to make changes to the room anyway because it's an old house and we had plaster that was crumbling, we decided, you know what, let's just take advantage of this and brighten things up and reduce the flat spaces and really make this room work the best that it can for our family. We had two super important criteria. One, the room had to remain visually uncluttered. And two, it had to be bright. We all really needed a brighter space to work because we're in here every day. So I took a huge risk and we decided to go with white walls. It took about six different samples to find the right paint color, but I am so happy with the color we chose. It's a custom color. I'll put the code down below in the description box. And it has just been amazing. Even in the afternoon, this room feels so cozy, so bright, and it's cleaned up really well. And I'm really excited about it. So I wasn't going to do this video until the floors were done, but I'm not sure when we'll be able to do those. And I'm always encouraging others to find a light in the middle of imperfection. So it just makes sense to share this room, even though the floors aren't done. When I was trying to decide on a layout for this room, I kept seeing photos of beautiful chalkboard spaces with lovely bookshelves. And I love the look and wanted to be able to write down our memory verses or the virtue we're working on each week. We actually made this chalkboard. Uh, we used part of an old office board my husband had and the frame is actually made out of wood lath from a wall we took down in another part of the house. This is the completed flashcard setup I talked about in a previous video and it's working out so well. Each child has a color and I use their color to tab the cards or packets that they need for the week. Uh, this way I can quickly grab what we need when we sit down for lessons. The main way we cut down on visual clutter was by removing anything we don't currently use. I use a storage ottoman in the living room to store things we don't use regularly but that I still need ready access to and then past and future books are stored upstairs. On the top shelf here, we have reference materials, uh, a box for my high schoolers to put their papers in for grading, and the place value bottles I talked about in that earlier video. I also keep my little odds and ends box here. It just has some post-it notes for marking lesson planners, a game dice, and some Lego blocks that we use for review activities. On the second shelf, I have my teacher manuals. I'll be adding another bin soon. Uh, right now we're wrapping up some final subjects in our current grade levels, so we'll have more teacher manuals when my 10 and 12 year olds start their new levels. I also use this basket to store early readers for my younger kids. Now these desks were a huge deal for us. The kids said that our original school tables made it hard to focus and that they needed individual spaces. We actually found these on Facebook Marketplace. A parochial school was selling them for $20 a piece. I had never seen desks priced that low. We painted them with some enamel paint. I'll link the brand and color we used uh, down in the description box. 
We sanded the seats to remove all the pen marks and scratches, and then we just sealed them with tongue oil and put everything back together. One challenge with the desks was that they kept getting really messy inside, just books thrown everywhere. So I decided to go back to our trusty multi-purpose bins from the container store, and life has been much better since then. We have art supplies and flashcards on the left, and their books are on the right in their bin. When it's time for school, they just take out their bin and set it on the top of their desk, so everything is handy but still contained while they're working. To finish off this side of the room, we hung some original paintings that were done by my mother-in-law. She's a professional artist. And we have a simple calendar from our church that we use for my kindergartner's calendar time. We use these calendars for her in preschool as well, and she really loves the art in them and being able to see what Saint's Feast Day it is. So it's just been a really simple option for us. On the other side of the room, we have larger desks for the older kids. They are ages 12 to 17. When my husband had to upgrade computers for our family business, he donated the old computers to our home school. So that allows us to have people in different online classes at the same time, and that's been really helpful. The art display boards were a DIY project I did last year. We used them for our Memoria Press art cards and for displaying the kids' drawings and paintings. I try to change out the greenery with the seasons as a way of keeping us in touch with nature despite living in the middle of town. I showed this map in that homeschool supply haul video, but I decided to paint each region based on our states and capitals curriculum. I might go over it again to make it brighter, but we tend to do our skills subjects in the schoolroom and our content subjects in the living room, so I put the map on a hook and that just makes it portable and easy to use. On the opposite wall, we have our task bags. These are a new thing for us, but they're already showing some promise. I'll probably do a video on them at some point. But the general idea is to have constructive activities for the kids to do while they wait their turn for lessons. So this top shelf has copy work ideas that expose them to the New Testament, the Psalms, poetry, and eventually I'm going to add our Memoria Press timeline book here as well. I put the poetry book in a larger bag so I can rotate it with other books, even if they're larger than this one. I have a gorgeous hardcover copy of A Child's Garden of Verses, and I'm sure I'm going to be putting that in here at some point. On the bottom shelf, I have an art activity, and then we have phonics activities. The level one bags are for my youngest two children who are in kindergarten and simply classical level three. And the level two bags are for my 10 and 12 year olds. I have my struggling speller choose past spelling words for these activities, while I have another child find words in her current literature book. And yes, we have a classroom bunny rabbit. Actually, it's just the only place in the house where our rabbit's cage fits, but she is a really sweet addition to our school days. The kids wanted a fluffy rug in here, but I couldn't find anything in our price range. And so when I came across this jute rug at Hobby Lobby, it was like 50% off. So I went ahead and snatched it up. I really love the look of it and the kids still enjoy reading and playing on it. So I think it's a win. We're hoping to stain or paint the floors an espresso color. And I think the rug will look really nice with that. I would love to add some cozy seating in here, but I think we're going to have to wait until our high schoolers graduate next year. Under the double windows is actually the cold air return for the house, and so I can't put anything in that space. So I think we're going to have to wait until we can move two of the desks out and add something under the single window. So that is our schoolroom. Let me know in the comments if you have questions about anything. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss future videos. And until next time, we'll be praying for peace and delight in your homeschool.